every day people log into the game and face the disappointing yet inevitable reality that they cannot clear content with only 4 players, that they do indeed need a tank. You are the solution. Selflessly putting your ego and life on the line, feeling the need to quench the desperate cries for help. And as a reward for this noble deed, they will uh, kick you for the slightest mistake and then tell you to never play this game again. Yeah, uh, here's how to tank. It is impossible to go two minutes in this game without encountering complaints, either that there are no tanks or that actually tanking sucks. Tanking is actually a genius metaphor because not only are you tanking the enemies in game, you're also tanking the ever increasing chance of psychological trauma from all the in game harassment. Tanking is scary, and this is the biggest challenge to overcome when starting your prosperous career as a tank. But why is it so scary? I mean, you're not really doing anything special, for the most part, you run into enemies face first and try not to die while using your abilities which, you know, doesn't sound too different from the other roles. World of Warcraft is in its core a reactive game. You do your rotation, clicking buttons as they glow, you try not to stand in shit on the ground and you use your cooldowns to survive or deal more damage. Kind of a simple concept, works for all roles most of the time. At this stage of the game, DPS are very difficult to play, because it's binary. Either you do your rotation perfectly or you deal less damage. This makes the skill ceiling for DPS very high, because a perfect player never misses a single ability and also does all the mechanics perfectly, both of which are very hard to do in tandem. But that's not your entire job, is it? There's something missing here, because you run into the next pack, you position the mobs and you decide where to go next, which means that you also dictate the pacing of the group, and that is what you're afraid of. It is your job as a tank to decide when, where and how to tackle the next obstacle. A job which no other role has, and that means you better know what the hell you're doing. This proactive gameplay loop to decide the pace is what makes most people hesitant to try out the role. If you play too safe and go too slow, it makes you a bad tank. But if you play too risky and go too fast, it makes you a bad tank. In essence, as a tank, you decide your own and your partner's difficulty. But your decisions will always be judged and sometimes overruled by your other party members, so it's difficult but very important to find the right balance. Think of it as a family in a car. You are the driver, the DPS are the children in the back, screaming, are we there yet? And the healer sitting next to you, constantly monitoring your speed. Go too fast, the healer will ask you to slow down, but if you go too slow, the DPS will take the wheel and most likely drive you off the road, killing everybody inside. I need healing. A group in this game consists of roles that completely rely on the others to perform. The DPS and healer rely on the tank to keep up the pace, pull the right mobs and survive. The tank and DPS rely on the healers to keep them alive. The healer and the tank rely on the DPS to kill the enemies before resources run out. If one part falters, so will the rest. But this concept is perhaps your largest enemy while tanking and the source of most headaches. While it's true that for the most part, all roles rely equally on each other, in the public eye, tanks take the majority of that responsibility. If DPS is too low to kill the mobs before you run dry, the tank dies first, so it's obviously a tank fault. If the healer mistimed heals and couldn't keep the tank alive, the tank dies first, so it's obviously a tank fault. You get the point. And as a result, perhaps the strongest skill to have as a tank is not your in-game fortitude, but your real-life mental fortitude. You will meet hundreds of people who will never even give you a chance to grow, because they will judge you in the moment based solely on their own years of experience. And this is why your most important resource as a tank is confidence. Be confident in your ability to improve. Don't take it personally when somebody tells you to be better right now. They had years to get to their point, now it's your turn to take your time. I think it's important to recognize that people are impatient, that they will often disregard somebody's experience and just chalk it up to them being bad. Of course this doesn't mean be complacent, don't ever delude yourself into thinking your own abilities can't be improved and it's always somebody else's fault. I mean after all... A true master is an eternal student. But with all this said, you need to be respectful of people's time. Always put in the same amount of work you'd expect somebody else to put in for you. Don't go wasting people's time because you didn't do the proper research. Your goal is to build an empire of knowledge and experience, with the single motive being to improve your confidence. As a tank, you are the coolest person in the room. And do you know what cool people do? They like the video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you. It's a bit ironic that the way to learn tanking has nothing really to do with the game at all, but this is true for almost everything in life. If you work on your mindset, improvement will come. Of course, this rings especially true with this role in comparison to the others, 
because of the innate leadership responsibility. In a sense, you are a pseudo raid leader because you will always be in front. Now the important thing about what you're building up outside the game is that it will seamlessly transition into your gameplay. Once you become confident with your abilities, your route, your rotation and everything that comes with it, the pace will solve itself. Now here's the real question, is it worth it? You're spending an awful amount of time learning something in an incredibly hostile environment for the most part, and it can for sure be draining. Why do you owe these people who kick you from the groups anything? The truth is, you don't owe them anything. But you don't do this for them. It is incredibly satisfying and liberating to know that you are in charge. Because of the responsibilities you have, it also translates to having the most impact, which means that the person with the most impact is you. You are the person people come back to after they run to ask for more. You are the person people are happy to have in their group. You are this person because you deserve to be this person. You put in the work, and that's how you got here. As long as you lead with confidence, nothing can stop you because you are a tank. Okay, so I know this video didn't cover how to actually press your buttons correctly, but the game changes all the time, so I think it's important to focus on fundamentals instead of how to play your class in the current patch. Be willing to learn, and you will get good eventually.